a while um luckily i've um i've been quite lucky in the jobs i've had really and i think the last few years where some of them haven't worked out that well some of them have been a bit underwhelming some of them have had founders like nicholas oliver who you know were essentially scamming their employees and didn't pay them for close to a year but most of the places i've been at didn't require me to go to central london that's been a blessing because there was a time in my life where i essentially lived in central london this must have been the early 2000s when i was knee deep in crooked tongues going on forums arguing with 30 year old men about trainers right doing that kind of cool thing i wonder where those 30 year old men are now those men that were arguing with me about trainers and wanted to fight me at meetups and shit man little niche subcultures are so weird so bizarre imagine that was a thing back in the day right arguing with guys men were arguing with you and that was i think i have to i have to give myself some credit or give our generation some credit i think we must have been the first generation of like new kids on the scene because i remember when we got in there imagine let me think about it. yeah you know aaron bondorov how old is aaron bondorov let me google how old he is because i think that kind of represents the generation that i was in just under right aaron bondorov is probably like 38 i'm assuming right and the bondorov age let's see how old he is well, i'm not seeing him around in ages but yeah aaron bondorov is not 29 that's for sure Okay, if Aaron Bondorov was 29 in 2008, so he's about, what, 30, 38, 40, yeah, 40 years old? So I guess at that age, that that's what some of those guys were. Yeah, they were like 29 at that time, and I must have been 19, 21 or something along those kind of lines. And they were arguing with us on the internet about shoes. And that was a thing that people did about the scene and stuff. And again, I have sympathy for those guys because I think we were the first young kids coming through. And we were coming through with the internet. We were coming through with social media. We were coming through with hunger. We obviously saw an easy way out to get out of going to the university and studying, right? Because no one wants to study. No one wants to go to bloody uni and do that kind of boring stuff. If you find a solution to get out of it and resell shoes for a living, like why wouldn't you do it? So I guess we were so desperate to get in. It kind of shook up the industry and people were getting nervous and didn't want to move or get out of the way. And usually most industries are like that anyway, isn't it? It's very odd. It's not very usual. It's not likely that someone in the scene is going to step aside and let the kids take over why would you do that you've got the cushiest job in the world right think of somebody like fraser cook why would he step aside and let a kid take his job why why would you do that you've got a job essentially that you make up your own hours you travel the world you get to collaborate with all your heroes you get to sm you get to kind of shake hands and kiss babies and seal collaboration deals introduce people to you know future collaborators you get to become the glue that holds the scene together the quote-unquote linchpin you, you get to become like the danny says of streetwear no one would give that up just because, oh, you should hand it over to the kids. It's up to the kids to go up to the oldies and bloody snatch that baton out of their hand and just sprint down the road like they're, you know, jacking them on the street or something. That's what you're meant to do. So I had sympathy for them in that regard. But it was horrible, man. I remember it was just bizarre arguing with men on the internet and seeing them in real life thinking, this guy could be my uncle. Like, this is ridiculous. But, you know, here we are, man. But I think our generation are a bit, we're a bit more chill. I don't necessarily mind the kids nowadays. I think they're doing their thing quite well. I have a lot of respect for the guys on the basement. I love that community. I love the fact that when some of them, when someone gets lost on a train or doesn't have any money to go home, people chip in and send them paper funds to get a ticket home or they help each other out with, with them relationship stuff. They post stuff about their achievements. I think there's a couple of dudes on there who are professional footballers who will post a picture of themselves at their debut in a football game. Just like loads of nice, wholesome male energy on there young guys energy right and i love it and it's and it's definitely a little safe sanctuary they've built on the basement it's just for like it's just for guys under a certain age who are from a certain background who come on who cut who, who are from a certain era in kind of streetwear and sneakers i love it man i think those guys are doing the best thing ever even this lucky collaboration they put out recently the nike dunk they did back in the day i'm a big fan of everything they do and i think for the most part most most of my people most of the guys in my generation we don't really hate on them kids. We just let them live and do their thing. We just move on. Um, even the Supreme stuff, which I'm f kind of thinking or kind of come to realization that maybe I've, I've been aged out of Supreme. Supreme sort of kicked me out uh, with the stuff that they're doing now. They're purposely aiming towards the young kids. I don't have any hate for that either because I can just imagine if you're 16 years old and Supreme are putting out a Stone Island jacket, you know, the 17th one in a weird colorway, you're going to be coming all over yourself to get that jacket, innit? Right? If they make a, a Nike collaboration full of leather and swooshes and, you know, big logos everywhere, you'll be on it like Sonic, right? A Dead Prez collaboration. You probably don't even know who Dead Prez are, but you're just going to buy it and then Google them later. Because I remember that's what we used to do. When we used to watch skate videos and there was a cool soundtrack, you'd find out what the soundtrack was on the part that you was interested in. 
bagging on the forum and then you just go and listen to a whole back catalogue and then pretend on the forum like you were up on it. Oh yeah, I know about the Smiths. Like I found out about the Smiths through skateboarding. Like legitimately found out about Smiths through skateboarding. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't find out about them regardless of that. And then had to pretend on sidewalk forum that I knew about them from beforehand. Um, so yeah, I don't have any hate tools out. Oh, I think it's brilliant. I think it's great to see, but I can just imagine how much of a shock to the system it must have been for the generation above me when I was coming up to see all of us just, you know, queuing. Because I think we were even the first to really queue overnight. It wasn't a thing back then because there wasn't that big of a demand, right? I think of an Aaron Bondros generation. There wasn't that... People weren't queuing as much as they were when I got in. They were queuing, but not as much. Like, the demand wasn't that big. The subculture of streetwear or sneakers wasn't as big as it as it is now. Um, I remember the biggest queues we used to see were definitely in Asia. China and Japan were definitely the biggest queues, but mostly, again, they had smaller accounts, not a lot of people buying the stuff. And in general... The queue is sort of like the way to shop in Japan, right? They've been queuing since the 80s, you know what I mean? They love a good queue out there. Um, and they're fairly orderly. They're fairly orderly. There's no, like, you know, masses of McDonald's breakfast piled up in a corner somewhere, which we used to always do. But I miss that, man. I miss that. It was so much fun queuing in the morning. I was queuing really late at night, leaving my house at 11 in the, at night. And then, I, my, oh, God bless my parents, man. My parents used to let me leave my house to go and queue up in front of a store that they didn't even know existed in somewhere in central London with a camping chair, right? And my warmest jacket, like a Bape Snowball jacket or something, and then just go and sit out there and chill. I wish actually, when once I went out there, I wish I had, I wish I had this jacket. Have you seen this jacket from um, the Matthew Williams and Nike collaboration? I wish I had this when I was going out there and doing my bits and pieces. This would have been very, very warm. This jacket that Matthew Williams has done. It's the second one in it, right? Second collection, whatever. I think it's the third collection, actually. It's the Nike MMW, uh, what's it called? The Downfield Jacket. It's 680 quid, though. For a Nike jacket, it's a bit nuts, but it looks fucking gorgeous. It's so warm. You know, the Arsenal Winger jacket, the big, long one, but that looks bad, isn't it? This would be perfect if you're outside of a, a sneaker store somewhere trying to get your, you know, making sure you secured your place. Look how good that looks, sir. Huh? It reminds me of all the old school Nike NSW stuff that we used to have at 94 Year when I worked there. Like, I would have been all over this in the shop. But I don't, I'm not sure about this strap on the inside of it, though. Why would you, like, imagine trying to carry this on your back like this. It's just like, you have to be a certain height, too, because this would be dragging all over the floor. Oh, it's got gloves on the inside. Oh, buddy. This jacket is buff, isn't it? So nice. But yeah, I'd be, I'd be all over this, man. It's got weird. Oh, look, they've got the pins on there still from the styling. They haven't taken them off. <laughs> Lols. This guy's so skinny, he can't fit into tights. That's a madness, isn't it? <laughs> Being a model is mad. But it looks good on him, though. But I, w I wouldn't have the strap on it here. Like, it just looks a bit strange. Has it got the same buckle that Al Alix usually wears? Yeah, they have. But yeah. Um, big up the Q days, man. The old Q days was the best. I flipping loved it. I miss it so much. I wish I could go back to that um, era again someday soon. But, you know, unfortunately, we've moved on now. We're all older. We've all got full-time jobs. And queuing now would be a bit of a ridiculous thing to do unless it's something that you had to queue for. And nowadays, if you want... To, basically, the queue is just raffles and stuff, in it now, isn't it? A raffle is a queue. Putting your name into a, a hat and then giving your card deals over. Having a card company do a... What do you call it? Do a credit card check or a funds check on your account because I've got Monzo. So whenever you enter your card deals into End or something where they have to, like, take a payment... In order for you to win, um, it got it's just. I imagine what, what what these retailers must do with the funds beforehand. Do they get the funds, use it for something else, leverage your funds to get a loan, and then refund it back to your account? Like how long does it take to come back in? I wonder if you don't win the shoes. Um, but yeah, mad times, man, mad times. I, I miss that era. I really do. I made some good friends. But that's a good thing. I I, I really um savor for that from that era. So friendships I had from there, I still have them from now maybe apart from two or three people who i wouldn't care if they died tomorrow but for the most part everyone else i'm quite friendly with i'm quite cool with them all right with them if i see them around it'll be like you know I, you know it'll be like back when we were 21 again which is great you've got a lot in common you know spending 17 hours outside of a shop somewhere you get to know someone really really well very quickly um <laughs> so good era man good era so if your kids out there and you're still you know, you're taking part in streetwear culture now or sneaker culture. Savor it, man. All these complex comms, all these sort of stuff. Like, go to them, attend them with a big heart. Uh, try and meet as much people as you can and savor it because that, that era will fl go by in a flash and then you'll be like, damn, man, I remember when I didn't have any care in the world and I used to splurge a grand and a half on stuff every other week. Do you know what I mean? Like you'll, and then once you get older and you have rent to pay, those days of blowing a grand on a couple pairs of shoes to resell would be far, far, far gone. But yeah, pick up that era. 